Welcome to Level 2 of Verbal Advantage. In the introduction to the program, I discussed the importance of building a powerful vocabulary. Now let's take a moment to talk about how powerful vocabularies are built. There are many ways to enrich your knowledge of words. You may have seen the Building Your Word Power feature that has been running for years in Reader's Digest magazine. Its vocabulary quizzes are fun, but unless you review the words several times and put them to work right away in your conversation and writing, the definitions are soon forgotten and you are back where you started. Moreover, the words are not presented in order of difficulty. They are a miscellaneous assortment, with easier words mixed in with more difficult ones. If you already know the easier words, testing you on them does nothing but flatter your ego. Likewise, if the harder words are beyond your vocabulary level, then your chances of retaining them are slim. In such a random quiz, designed for a mass audience, much of which, I would add, probably is not at a higher vocabulary level and is not accustomed to reading much more than Reader's Digest, it's doubtful that more than two or three of the words in each month's list will be challenging and useful to you. Not to mention that a month is a long time to wait to learn a handful of new words. So, what else can you do to improve your knowledge of words? You can always buy a book. There are many vocabulary-building books on the market, and some of them are quite good. Keep in mind, however, that even the best of these books offer little or no instruction in usage and pronunciation, and the worst ones merely contain a list of words and definitions, in no particular order, with quizzes that do not test how well you've assimilated the vocabulary, but rather how well you learn by rote. Another option is to take a class or do what you're doing now, listening to this interactive program. Any disciplined and structured study of words is always more beneficial than casual exposure. On the other hand, many vocabulary-building courses and programs don't live up to their hype. Too often they force-feed you a random selection of words and definitions that you must again learn by rote. That, I'm sure you will agree, is neither a pleasant nor an effective way to build your knowledge of words. And that is why Verbal Advantage introduces you to words in their order of difficulty, accompanied by specific information on where they come from, how they should be used, and how to avoid common errors of usage and pronunciation. But I still haven't told you the most effective way to build your vocabulary. Vocabulary building books and courses are an excellent start, but they cannot cover everything you need to know, and both must at some point come to an end. That is where the primary method of vocabulary building comes in. Have you guessed what it is? Reading. Simple, but oh so true. If you wish to continue to build your vocabulary after completing this program, in fact, if you want to retain the words you know right now, you must start reading more, reading widely, and reading something, even if just a few pages at first, every single day. That, of course, requires discipline. You need to set aside some time each day to read. An hour is great, but most of us have a hard time finding an hour when we can be undisturbed. You should be able to schedule 30 minutes, though, without too much trouble, and even 15 minutes of reading a day will help, provided you stick to it and choose your material with an eye toward building your knowledge of words. What should I read is the next question. Well, let's start with what you read now. Most Americans spend 15 or 20 minutes a day reading a newspaper. The newspaper is not the best place to find new words, simply because most are written at a 5th to 7th grade reading level. That is no accident, nor is it a comment on the inferior abilities of the nation's journalists. Newspapers must serve the general public, and the general public consists mostly of low vocabulary readers. However, some newspapers contain excellent writing. The New York Times, the Los Angeles Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the Christian Science Monitor are particularly well written. Also, certain sections within any given newspaper are generally written better than others. For instance, in the editorial pages, you will read some of your paper's most talented writers and the syndicated columns of some of the finest journalists in the nation as well. Regardless of which newspaper you read, you will not do much for your vocabulary if you read only the sports section, the society page, the advice columns, or the funnies. 
If you're looking for interesting, useful words to add to your vocabulary, how about trying the theater, book, movie, and restaurant reviews? Many people also find the crossword puzzle a helpful vocabulary building tool. Weekly news magazines such as Time, Newsweek, and U.S. News and World Report can also provide a nutritious diet of good writing and challenging words, as well as the added benefit of keeping you up to date without taking up a lot of your time. And while you're at it, be sure to note the headlines of all the articles you read. They can be a veritable gold mine of new words. Headline writers must find the shortest, sweetest way to capture the essence of a story, and often that means dredging up such stumpers as eschew, aver, impugn, distaff, and brute. Are you familiar with those words? Let's take a brief look at them. Eschew, e s c h e w, means to avoid, shun, as to eschew alcohol. Aver, a v e r, means to assert, declare, state positively, as to aver one's faith or innocence. Impugn, i m p u g n, means to oppose in words, attack by argument, question or criticize the truth or integrity of, as to impugn authority. Or impugn someone's reputation. Distaff, D I S T A F F, means female, pertaining to women, as in the distaff side of a family, which is opposed to the spear side, the male line of descent. Finally, to brute, B R U I T, means to report widely, spread the word. As the scandal was bruited in the media. If you have a hobby or particular area of interest outside of your occupation, you should subscribe to a publication that specializes in it. Articles on hunting, fishing, gardening, mechanics, parenting, cooking, antiques, travel, and a host of other subjects frequently contain uncommon words. For example, did you know that a stamp collector is called? A philatelist, philatelist begins with P H. A coin collector is a numismatist, and the word for a magician who specializes in sleight of hand is prestidigitator. You want to know how to spell prestidigitator? Hang on, it's a long one. P R E S T I D I G I T A T O R. In an article on exercise in a health magazine, you might run across a medical term like pulmonary, pertaining to the lungs, or vascular, pertaining to the blood vessels. In magazines specializing in food and wine, you may find such delicious words as gastronome, a lover and connoisseur of fine food, indigenous, belonging or native to a particular country or region, and sommelier. S O M M E L I E R, the wine steward in a restaurant. Recently, I read an article on the 19th century French painter Edgar Degas, D E G A S. It was published in a national fashion magazine that does not have a reputation for catering to a high vocabulary audience. In just the first two pages, however, I found the following high vocabulary words. Vignette, a literary sketch, short composition. Redolent, which means exuding a fragrance, aromatic. Simian, which means pertaining to or resembling an ape. Libido, which means sexual drive. Misogyny, which means hatred of women. Salacious, which means arousing sexual desire. Assiduous. Which means careful and persistent, and ennui, e n n u i, which means boredom or a state of weary dissatisfaction. The point is, interesting, challenging, and useful words are everywhere in your everyday reading if you want to find them.
The key is to keep your eyes and ears open and don't let any of them slip by. So whenever you read, make a conscious effort to look for words you don't know. And keep a dictionary handy while you're reading so you can look them up right away. If you can't always read with a dictionary beside you, then highlight or underline the unfamiliar words in your reading, or dog-ear the pages on which they occur, so you can look up the words later. Reading with an eye for words you don't know and reading with a dictionary are the two best ways you can continue to enrich your vocabulary after you complete the Verbal Advantage program.